In the previous video on events, we covered the simple concepts. Find the link to this video on the top right and in the image, the summary of the events that are developed there. Let's now go into the more technical aspects of the standard, which is the use of interruptive or non-interruptive boundary events. Boundary events. Boundary events are only intermediate events located at the edge of an activity or subprocess. They are triggered by a condition, a message, a signal, or a timer, among other things, which we'll describe in this video. The use of this type of event allows dynamic management of processes and gives clarity on the different possible scenarios within the same process. There are two categories of boundary events. Interruptive events, which can be identified by a double continuous line. These events, when triggered, will terminate the task to which they are attached and redirect the flow. And the non-interruptive events, identified by a double dashed line. These allow the creation of a parallel flow without interrupting the main flow. Non-interruptive events. In this case, as long as the activity, pass an exam, remains unfulfilled at each activity of the border event, a token is created and comes to align the process. To note that there are as many tokens created as triggers of the border event. As soon as the pass an exam activity is satisfied, then we have two active process branches independent of each other that will run. Interruptive events. Let's go back to the previous diagram, this time with an interruptive border event. Here, when the token is on the take an exam activity, if the boundary event at the latter is activated, the activity is deactivated, and a new token is created at the boundary event, and the process continues on the cancel exam activity. The pass exam and cancel exam activities cannot be activated simultaneously. Let's now go into the details of the more complex interruptive events. The error event. These are events represented with a lightning bolt pictogram. They symbolize the behavior of a process following an error in its execution, which will change the purpose of the process. Error events can belong to three families, start, intermediate, and end. An error is necessarily interruptive and constitutes information that must be processed within our process. It is important to emphasize that end and start error events can only be used within the framework of subprocesses. In this example, when we consult the train departures, we have two options. Either the train is maintained and boarding is possible, or the train is canceled, and in this case, the cancellation error event is activated. This activation triggers the train cancellation boundary event, and simultaneously the subprocess is deactivated and the go home activity is activated. The climbing event. These are events represented with an upward arrow pictogram. The escalation event and an event capable of passing information from subprocess to a parent process. They are used to indicate during a process the management of a situation that alters the purpose of the process without requiring its interruption. Unlike error events, these events allow a process to receive feedback from the subprocess. Let's go back to our previous example. In this case, whatever the information concerning the departure, the journey will take place. But if a delay is noted, this information existing at the level of the subprocess is transmitted to the process via the escalation event without interrupting the journey. The terminal event. These are events represented with a solid, circular pictogram. As soon as they are activated, the whole process is stopped. In this example, following the validation of an application, we have to prepare the arrival of a potential new employee. On the one hand, we have to make sure the workstation is ready. And on the other hand, we have to submit the employment contract. In the event of a refusal, the whole process is stopped and all the tokens disappear simultaneously. In this summary, you will find the new events described in the second part. While waiting for the next part, 
Do not hesitate to comment and give us feedback on the proposed contact until we meet again for our next video.